Hey folks, I hope you all are doing great and having an awesome day. I am Ira, your host, and I want to thank you for joining me for episode 5 of The Dark Side. Today we'll be discussing the Savannah Gold disappearance. Before jumping into the story, I'd like to say that if you have a case you wish for us to review, please contact me. Feel free to message directly via Facecase, Twitter, the comment section below, etc. I firmly believe the most interesting of situations and stories will originate from you. Anyways, without any further delay, let's talk about the disappearance of Savannah Gold. Savannah Gold was a beautiful and vivacious 21-year-old woman residing in Jacksonville, Florida, who was last seen alive Wednesday, August the 2nd, 2017, at 5.15 p.m. when she left her home for work. She failed to report for duty at the Bonefish Grill that evening. Instead, shortly after she left her home, relatives began receiving bizarre text messages from her phone. Her father received a text at 6.30 p.m. as he was leaving for work, stating she was leaving town without disclosing where she was headed. The message received was poorly written, lazy, lacking punctuation, capitalization, contained numerous grammatical errors and misspelled words. Gold's family suggested those texts were out of character, noting they did not appear to be typed in her style. The message received stated, Hey, I just wanted to tell you and mom I met a really great guy and we're running away together. I love him and we're leaving tonight. I'll call you later when we get to where we're going. Um, yeah, sounds legit all right. Anyways, Savannah's mother in an interview stated, When my husband and I received and reviewed this text, we immediately knew this was not from our daughter. That is simply not how she speaks, types, etc. Her brother also received a text message from the same phone around 6.10 p.m. that evening. It stated, Hey, I quit. I'm leaving with my boyfriend. I can't do this shit anymore. I'm fine. Just want to get away. Outside of the horrifically stupid messages they received, the family noted that Savannah wasn't involved romantically with anyone. Following these messages, the Gold family at 7.12 p.m. contacted authorities to report their daughter as missing. Miss Gold's vehicle was located shortly in the investigation in the Bonefish Grill's parking lot. Upon review, it was determined that a tire had been slashed, her purse with her identification, credit cards, and cash were locked inside. She never made it into the Bonefish Grill for her shift, however. Authorities were quick to begin their investigation into her disappearance and immediately suspected foul play. Police canvassed the area around her workplace, interviewed co-workers, and gathered surveillance video Thursday and Friday. By Friday night, they had noticed a contradiction between one individual statement and what was witnessed from Bonefish's surveillance video. The video footage obtained showed Savannah arriving at work at 5.31 p.m. Wednesday, August the 2nd. Upon arrival, she left her vehicle and entered another. 14 minutes later, the vehicle she entered began to violently shake. Following the shaking, a male exited the car, walked over to Savannah's, leaned into her vehicle, and soon proceeded to puncture one of her tires. At 6.04 p.m., the individual engaged his car's engine and left the parking lot. Savannah was at scene. The individual we are speaking of is called Lee Rodarte. He is a 28-year-old and was a culinary manager at the Bonefish Grill. Shortly into questioning Lee Rodarte, he admitted to authorities that he killed her and told them where they could find her body. At 1.15 a.m. Sunday, August the 6th, police were directed to Club du Clay Drive, where there's a lake. Human remains were found in the water. Those remains were later confirmed to be that of Savannah Gold. Retarde was charged with her murder at this time. Gold's parents, who were especially shocked to learn that Rodarte allegedly confessed to killing their daughter, Daniel Gold, Savannah's father, said he ran into Rodarte at Bonefish Grill immediately following Savannah's disappearance and that he looked him straight in the eyes and offered well wishes in finding his daughter alive. When I walked away from him, I was like, 
that guy has nothing to do with this. I know he's involved with Savannah somewhat, but he can't be the guy. Just because he was so he was so friendly, sincere, and smiling, Daniel Gold said. Savannah's mother, Sherry Gold, said, Rodarte has extinguished a bright light, and now because of it, I will never hold her babies. I will never let this go, and he will never see the last of me. I will fight to the day I die to make sure he stays in jail. Her father had a message for his daughter's killer as well. You're not going to hide. We've got you. These people have you. They are not going to let you hide. We're not going to hide. We are going to be here representing our daughter every step of the way. And we are not going to hide from this, he said. We are going to celebrate her life and we are not going to hide from the tragedy this is. And we want you to know that you are not going to intimidate us. You are not going to scare us. There is no chance we are going to be here. Thanks for tuning in. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the situation and the disappearance of Savannah Gold. Make certain to like and subscribe. Do me a favor and share this video while you are at it. It really helps folks. Make certain to follow us via Twitter and Facebook. Links are in the description.